trigger errors. We're having trigger error issues. Uh, so the last time I took this car out, <clears throat> I was getting a misfire around 5,500 RPMs. And when I looked at the log, it was saying that it was um, losing trigger, like unexpected missing tooth. Uh, so I did a lot of research and a lot of people are saying that the the VR sensors, which this is a VR, which is a, basically a stock Toyota sensor, okay? Uh, you know, it just runs off two wires and sends like a, like a sine wave signal to the ECU. Well, the problem with those is they're, they're kind of uh, susceptible to noise. Any kind of, you know, noise you have uh, with alternators or anything uh, can cause a problem. So, I'm gonna switch over to the hall sensors, okay? So this is a hall sensor here. Let me give you guys the part number. It's, uh, I got these from DigiKey. Hopefully y'all can read that. Uh, but these were much cheaper than you could get from like Powerhouse Racing or anything like that. You know, the kit they sell. Uh, their, their kit is like over $300 and I got these for 35 bucks a piece. Okay, or like it was no, maybe it was like 34. Anyway, uh, so all I have to do is make my own little brackets. So I've already started working on the bracket for the crank trigger. Uh, as you can see, they're a little longer. So the diameter is the same, but they're a little longer. So I had to make a little bit of a spacer and also I had to relocate the hole because the hole's a little lower too on the stock sensor. So I did have to cut it up and modify it a little bit. Hopefully it'll work. But I made this little spacer, okay? And that material is actually high temp plastic. Okay, and then I had to relocate the hole like that and cut off part of the other hole. So, I'm, you know, it's a little bit janky, but uh, I think it's gonna be okay. And. Uh, the other good thing about using, okay, this material I'm using is, um, it's called Altem. Okay, it's this stuff here. I use it for some other projects I do. And um, what it's for is it's for high temp. So it's good to like 350 degrees. Basically, it's like, um, uh, like a phenolic spacer you would use on a carburetor or an intake or whatever. It's, it's basically that kind of material. So, and, and like I said, the other thing I was um, reading about these sensors is they don't like heat soak. So I, I could have definitely made this little spacer out of aluminum, but I went ahead and chose this material because I think it's gonna, it'll be uh, better for heat soak. Less heat will get transferred into the sensor, okay? So that's, that's my theory anyway. I don't know. I don't know if that'll, that'll work or not, but we'll see. And I'm not even 100% sure. Uh, I, I mean, they say they work, but <clears throat> I'm hoping that that sensor works with the trigger wheel. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, they say it does, so we will see. So anyway, uh, I got this one done, uh, and I went ahead and wired it up. Got it wired here with some disconnects so I can take it off if I ever like remove the engine. I just unplug it right there and then I can leave the sensor hooked up. I don't have to go and disconnect all the sensors. I, I kind of tried to make the whole engine bay like that where I can just disconnect, you know, everything. And like the harness there, I just, I can fold it back and I can get to everything. So since I got that one done, the next one I need to work on is this one here, which is gonna be kind of a pain because I, I'm gonna have to loosen the intake or take it off one of the two and to be able to get to it because it's it's kind of a pain uh, as you all know before I I made this this fitting here and welded it to the head which it in turn caused a bunch of other problems with the intakes as you can see the intake you know when they when I bought this intake they weren't they didn't know that I welded that fitting in there so um, obviously I had to cut away some of the intake um, to get this to fit, but doing that makes it hard to get to the bolts. So let me pull all this apart and, um, yeah, we'll try to figure out something to make for that. I got to set the air gap and make a an adapter for that. Okay. So a little free hand work. 
Uh, I didn't use the CNC to make this. I just kind of cut it on my own, kind of drew it out, cut it on the bandsaw, use a boring bar to make a little recess there and a threaded uh, hole there. So this will mount <clears throat> to here, okay? So that's gonna mount to there. And then this mounts to here. Hard doing this with one hand, but this mounts to here with the bolt right there. And the little recess I have in there fits this O-ring. See the O-ring I have, just found that <clears throat> laying around, happened to fit, so yeah, so it should seal. And if not, I can always use a little silicone or whatever, but um, yeah, I mean, this isn't really seat oil pressure. It'll see some splash, but not like pressure. So yeah, let me go ahead and bolt this one on. And uh, yeah, and uh, then I can go ahead and wire it up. <clears throat> I have to make a few changes in the ECU. Uh, <clears throat> also, I have to switch a few wires too as well. Uh, let me see. A little bit of a mess in here right now. I've been looking at it. <clears throat> I need to switch over. Um, I need a five volt source. Okay, so the VR sensor doesn't need a five volt source, but the halls do. So you have five volts in, you have ground, and then you have your output, which is a digital signal. Okay, it's either five volts or zero volts. So that's kind of why the, uh, <clears throat> the hall sensors are a little better than VR, or actually a lot better because it's either on or off. It's not like a, like a sine wave that can be affected by interference. So, all right, let me get that uh, hooked up and then, um, yeah, we'll come back, see if I can get the uh, ECU to recognize it and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so we got the sensor in. Uh, this one's bolted in and I got <clears throat> this one down here bolted in. Uh, so, I did have a little bit of an issue. Uh, the adapter I made for the crank sensor was a little too thick. So it was kind of too far away from the pickup, uh, the reluctor wheel, and I wasn't getting any uh, trigger. So I had to take it all back apart and uh, machine it down a little bit and get the, the uh, sensor a little close to the, closer to the wheel. So I um, ended up around 25 thousandths on both of them. So you gotta re uh, the one thing to remember is that hall sensors don't require as tight of a gap. Uh, there's, there's much more, they're much more forgiving. But I guess I just had it, I still had it too far away. But uh, anyway, uh, let's, I'll go through the settings on the ECU. Now, <clears throat> I do realize that if you're using, you know, different ECUs that this is not gonna translate, but it, it may actually help you because I know like Haltech and uh, a couple other ones, they have similar uh, settings that you can go in and, and play with. So I'll just show you on this and uh, you know, if you have a different ECU, you're pretty much on your own, but. Okay, <clears throat> so you go to your triggers, which in here it's you know, it's just ignition. You go to your ignition tree and that it's your primary and secondary triggers are right here. <clears throat> and then, so the primary trigger, we switched it to hall, which is right here. Uh, the pull up, pull down. Now these sensors, if you buy the ones that I gave you the part number for, uh, they already have a built-in pull up resistor. So you can uncheck that if you're, you don't need to have any pull up, okay? <clears throat> and then you can also run a lower filter too, because you got to remember it's digital. So you're not going to have the noise interference like you would with the VR. Okay. So you can run that low or even you could maybe even run that off. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Like I could run none uh, and try that. So yeah, uh, my, my phone just shut off there accidentally. But um, yeah, like I said, you can, you can run your, um, let's bring these, this over here. Uh, you can run your input filter on low. Uh, I don't know if, I, maybe I can turn it off, we'll see uh, in the future. 
but uh and then you you know you got the other stuff here trigger type um it's a 36 2 which means 36 teeth with two missing okay um, and then you have to switch from a falling edge to a rising edge so when you do that you, then you have to go in and uh, lock your timing which at the bottom here you can um, ignition lock right here you check that <clears throat> set your timing at like 10 degrees and then you want to check it with a timing light. So I did have to adjust a little bit. Um, this uh, trigger angle, which is where it, where I guess it starts, um, it went from 64 down to 61 in order to bring the timing back to 10 degrees because as soon as I went from falling edge to rising edge, it, it retarded the timing like four degrees. Okay, so you got to bring that back so that your, you know, your computer knows or your, your, your software knows where the car is as far as, you know, crank position. So, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Um, and then <clears throat> your secondary trigger, which is the cam, you know, you switch it to hall. Um, I did the same thing here. Take away the pull up resistor input filters low. Um, and the trigger type is one tooth. So the, the GSC cam has just one tooth on it. Like a normal um, VVTi GTE motor would have three on the cam, three pickups. Uh, and then you would just change that to three. So, but the way I have it set right now, I know it works because I've already started it. So um, yeah, the only other thing I need to test <clears throat> is to see if um, my loss of sync goes away. So. It was right around 5,000 RPMs where it would hit a brick wall and then start um, losing, I would lose my trigger. And it would it would seem like it was on a, um, uh, like a rev limiter. It would just hit that and just wouldn't go any further. So um, I do need to go check it really quick. We'll, we'll take it out front and try it out and see if, um, see if that fixed it. But uh, I'll show you how it starts right now. And then, um, yeah, we'll see, if, maybe we'll take it out front. One thing I can tell you is uh, this thing is making more power on 13 pounds of boost than the 1J made on like 25 pounds of boost. I can just tell. I mean, it's pulling hard. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see in the video, but it's getting sideways um, in second gear. And yeah, so, but I mean, it looks like we've got most of our issues solved, okay? I did get one tiny error right here, right around uh, 6,000 RPMs. Uh, it gave me a little glitch. But after that, it cleared up and it was fine all the way out to 6,600. Uh, so uh, what I've been doing is I've been playing with the edge rejection angle, okay? I have it set at three degrees right now. I'm probably going to bump that up a little bit. And what that does is um, if there's an unexpected tooth, um, when you increase that value, it ignores them. Okay, so it ignores it until uh, like a, a certain percentage of the dead in between teeth. It ignores a certain percentage of it. And you can increase that value until you don't have any more errors. Okay, because hall sensors are, um, they trigger easier, I should say. So if, you know, the higher the RPM, you could get false triggers. So instead of a missing tooth, it's not really missing. It's actually adding a tooth, which also gives you an error. 
Uh, this, some of the research I've done, I've read about that, you know, hall sensors can do that. But um, I mean, it's still a hundred times better than it was before when it wouldn't even go past 5,000 and it would hit a brick wall. So, I mean, everything looks pretty good. I mean, the tune looks good. We're a little tiny bit lean up top. Let's see if I can focus this here. Uh, you know, I've never had it up in this area before yet. So in these RPM ranges, so I have no way of knowing how the tune was, but uh, it's a little lean, 8.2, 8.1. Eight one, so we can fatten that up just a little bit. Eight two, uh, you know we can fat it up in the higher RPM areas, uh, and then, you know, because like I said, I, I haven't got it up into there yet, so I didn't know um, where the tune should be. So we can work on that a little bit, and I may increase the um, this a little bit more, maybe make it four or five. Uh, as long you you can increase it until you. Um, start missing teeth altogether. Uh, so you don't want it to ignore good teeth, right? You, you don't want it to ignore good teeth. Uh, you just want to want it to ignore unexpected teeth. So uh, we'll keep going. And if we don't get any errors at four, I'll leave it there. But, um, but anyway, this is good, good progress. And um, so far I'm happy with the way it's going. It felt really good. Like I said, um, uh, I don't know. This thing's going to be a monster. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something. If you are thinking of switching to hall sensors from VR, um, they do work. So anyway, that's going to do it. Check you all later.